What's up, everybody? It's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I want to introduce a brand new series today. It kind of hit me the other day that I would have a lot of material for this subject, and it's going to be called The Lost Art Series. And that's when I bring back things from the past that I feel like today's music might be lacking and uh, see if you agree with me on whether, you know, sometimes things get better, but sometimes they don't. And today I want to talk about the lost art of tempo drift. And if you've never heard that phrase before, just stick with me. You're going to understand it in a little bit. It hit me the other day when I was driving and listening to an 80s station and a song by Asia came on. It's called Heat of the Moment. And like usual, I was drumming on my steering wheel, but I noticed throughout the song, it kept speeding up in tempo. And by the time I got to the end, it was about 20 beats per minute faster than when it began. I ran back to my studio and actually timed it on my phone. I have this tap tempo uh, metronome app, and whenever I want to figure out a song, I just tap along to it. Now, that's pretty extreme. But back in the day, you know, uh, there was a lot of drummers that just kind of set the tempo themselves. There were devices back then that they could follow. There was a rack mount unit called the Russian Dragon. And I remember that being in the studio way back in the day. We never used it, but I thought that was a clever name because if you're rushing or you're dragging, this thing will help you out. So the Russian Dragon. So I'm not saying the older drummers never used any help like that, but... Uh, I love the bands that didn't. I really love the feel of a lot of these groups. And I thought about it, and I'm like, back when I was in a metal band, teenage metal band, uh, we never used a click, and it was a little bit erratic sometimes. You know, I'd listen to playback of our shows, and the tempo would fluctuate. I always said our drummer had dynamic tempo. It's kind of a nice way of saying sometimes he, you know, speeds up or slows down according to how he feels. When you're on stage and the adrenaline's rushing, sometimes it's easy just to kind of get carried away. But you're fitting the mood of the moment moment. And so I guess the heat of the moment was right. Sometimes it feels like the tempo just has to change with parts of the song. Something I notice about a lot of rock music today is it seems to be recorded to a click. So the drummers in the studio, maybe they pre-recorded some tracks on Pro Tools or something. And so they're following along to something. And so you get a real grid feel when you listen to some of these songs. And I sometimes wonder if that's why I can't really grab on to a lot of the new music that's out there. You know, maybe it's just because I'm old, but it might be also because it doesn't feel right to me. Growing up with Kiss, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, uh, Iron Maiden, bands like that. So it made me curious and I actually started to pull up old classic tunes like Run to the Hills. <laughs> And I started to do the tap tempo timing with those. And for that particular song, I found out that it starts off on one tempo. Then when the solo hits, it speeds up. Then by the end of the song, it goes back down to the normal tempo. And that might be why the solo part sounds so exciting as well. The most blatant time I felt this was when I was in a band that used backing tracks for half the songs. And we were playing along to this dance tune. And, uh, you know, it was real solid, obviously. It sounded great because we're playing to backing tracks. There's all these sounds coming out of the PA system and we're on, we're locked onto the grid. But halfway through the song, the backing track skipped and the drummer just had to shut them off. And we had to play the rest of the song just free and untethered. And something really amazing happened. We started looking at each other a little bit more instead of just being kind of zoning out when we played at the click track. Uh, we started to use body language and looking at each other and being like, okay, what are you gonna do now? And the tempo fluctuated by a little bit, but it felt better to me. And at the end of the show, the drummer was actually like, do we really need to play with backing tracks? It felt so much better when we were just free to play what we wanted. So I've been working on some riffs and last night I was on my couch jamming and I thought, you know, this riff would probably sound a lot different if I played along to a click versus if I just play it free and it sounds like this It's got a real jammy feel to it. So I thought it'd be really fun to come in today and actually lay down some drum tracks and do an experiment and then ask all of you what your opinion is, if it sounds better to a click or if it sounds better to just free drumming. So on one of the tracks, I played to a metronome and it's set to 135 beats per minute. And I just did the whole thing with that straight through. And then I let my ears rest a little bit. I went and got something to eat, came back, and I just decided to record it free with no click. Cause I thought that'd be really cool just to see how close it is to the click track version of it. And does it feel better? Does it sound better? What's the differences? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up the two examples. I'll say exhibit A and exhibit B. 
One where I played to a click track and one where I played completely free. And I'd be really curious to see which ones you think sound better or, or feel better or maybe both. And I won't tell you which one is which, although I'm sure you can maybe figure it out. I don't know, it is kind of a subtle difference between the two. And then I'll give you my opinion afterwards. So let's start with exhibit A. Like I said, that's a really fun track. It's got that real jam feel to it. Uh, let's try exhibit B and see what you think. Here we go. Alright, so in the comment section before I do the reveal, go ahead and let me know which one you like better. And let me know if you thought it sounded better or felt better or both, because that's really important to me. Okay, so here's the reveal. Exhibit A was actually the track that was free, that was done without a click. And uh, like I said, it's subtle, but in the beginning it's at 134 beats per minute. So it's one beat per minute slower than when I actually played to a click. And I guess it just felt right to play it at that uh, tempo in that moment. But then when the breakdown happens, I found that I sped up a little bit. And then after that, when I came back out to the main riff again, I was so excited that it actually went up about four or five beats per minute right there. So you could kind of feel it get a little bit faster, not necessarily hear it, but you just feel that something happens after that breakdown. And then by the end, thankfully, I got back to 135. So I kind of tamed it back down a little bit at the end to finish off. <laughs> And exhibit B, like I said, is just one tempo through the whole thing, 135. So what I concluded was if I was in the studio and we were just trying to construct the song from the ground up, it would probably sound best if we did it with a click. You know, it'd be really predictable. The whole thing would feel pretty straightforward and tight. But... You know, back in the old days when Sanctus would record, that's my old teenage metal band, would record our songs, like I said, we didn't use a click, and they were kind of all over the place. But it's really hard to match that feel. There was an energy to it that's really hard to do these days when we try to do things to clicks. It just doesn't have the same excitement to it. But I would say in the studio, doing it to a click wouldn't be the end of the world. But live, for sure, without a click, I believe that this riff in particular would sound really great without a click. Just having that free ability to speed up a little bit, to slow down a little bit, to match whatever the vibe is. 
Now, if you brought the click to the live situation, I think you sort of neuter it a little bit. There are drummers out there that are so incredible playing the clicks, they could still make it feel, you know, with that ebb and flow, they could still uh, let it fluctuate in a really cool way. But even if you're really good at playing to a click, you're still following something. And I think that can ultimately take away from the vibe of the riffs that I wrote. And it was so funny when I shut off the click and I did the free drum version because it just felt like I was unchained, like I was leashed up and all of a sudden I was free to go. It's a little bit scary because you have to kind of keep yourself under control. But if I felt excited, I could speed up a little bit and I could really go with how I was feeling. And I think that came through in the track, even though it's a little bit subtle, like I said. Another cool thing that happened when I shut off the click was that I didn't have to focus part of my brain on something. I just thought about the music. I heard the song in my head and I played along instead of having that little other element of, oh, am I on the click? Because uh, when you get really good, you stop hearing the click, but it's still in the back of your mind that you're following something. So I think that also adds to the feel. Now, because this is such a short segment of the song, it's really hard to feel the entirety of what I'm talking about. But just go back and listen to any classic rock band. There were drummers that did follow clicks, but you could find the real organic drummers back in the day, really uh, key in on Led Zeppelin if you want. And you could see that, uh, you know, John Bonham is a master of kicking it up a little bit if it needs it or holding it back if you're, you know, trying to go for that as well. So he was able to use that natural tempo drift to their advantage. So let me know what you think. Hopefully you put what you thought in the comment section before I did the reveal. But either way, even now that you know which track is which, is the click the way to go for the music you like? Or do you like it completely free? Or does it just depend on the kind of music that you listen to? So obviously dance music, industrial, techno, that kind of stuff's always going to follow clicks. But when it comes to older pop music or rock or heavy metal, let me know if it uh, is better just doing it free because that's what I believe. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching. It was a lot of fun bringing these new riff ideas to life. Uh, maybe I'll do something more with them in the future, but uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks again. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.